Miss Behave's class had a question about her Psychopsis orchid, a genus that I do not grow by the way, but I feel as though I can speak on this subject, no matter the genus. Her comment inspired me to make this video and go into more detail as well as reasons as to why orchids absorb their new growths, not just during the winter months as is the case with Miss Behave's classes, Psychopsis, so shall we? Let's start right out of the gate with growth failing during the winter months. There may be a lot of repeats with the other reasons, but the most important and dangerous time for our orchids that are growing new growth is during the winter months, especially when we are growing orchids indoors while we wait for outdoor temperatures to warm up enough for the orchids to go outside again. In the case of Misbehaves classes Psychopsis, we can determine straight away the reasons for a growth failing because this genus is a warm to hot grower, meaning the first reason a growth may fail, get absorbed or stops growing altogether is temperature. Any orchid that is attempting to grow new structures during conditions that are not to their preference will abort the growth. In some cases, the growth will stop growing while it waits for the conditions to improve and then continuing on with growing, but that's not what we are addressing in this video. So, as the bio clock of our orchids differ from what is going on with our conditions, new growths will fail if temperatures are too low or in the case of cool to cold growers, the temperatures are too high. For a controlled environment, this can be easily adjusted and corrected. However, by the time we recognize a growth that failed, the correction of temperature comes too late for that growth. Which does not mean that the orchid will not attempt another new growth with temperatures corrected. However, that won't happen immediately as the orchid has to mobilize energy and hormones to another point of growth. Many times we blame ourselves when growths fail because we think we got water into the new growth and for that reason it rotted out. While that may be the case and cause a new growth to fail, another reason is the amount of humidity in the air that will take a new growth out before it gets past the dangerous phase of being a tightly packed swelling and growing eye. High humidity will have a detriment to those tightly packed structures, even watering from below will not avoid rot. High humidity, while great, will cause issues only if airflow is stagnant. Add two low temperatures to the high humidity and we create a double jeopardy for any new growth. The opposite is true for cool to cold growers. When humidity is too low, during temperature ranges that are out of their preference of these kinds of orchids, new growths will frazzle and crisp up. It will look as though we had a rot issue, but during low humidity with high temperatures, very rarely is it a rot issue. Mainly, it is a drying out of the tender cells that makes a new growth fail. Maybe we have these factors dialed in. Correct temperature for the orchids in question, same with the right humidity and balanced airflow, and yet growths tend to fail. Then we have to check light levels. Light is super important as well, not just for orchids that find themselves in a period of rest or dormancy, but especially when an orchid is growing a new growth. If that growth fails, even though temperatures are ideal, it is possible that the light levels were too low, which prevented the orchid from photosynthesizing, no sugars, no energy, and even fertilizer or supplements cannot be metabolized efficiently for the new growth to develop. Speaking of those precious ingredients, fertilizer and supplements, we tend to go really careful when it comes to adverse conditions and that is a good thing, but we have to be super careful which orchids are doing what so that we can be ready to support the activity. Many orchids we grow in our private collections love their calcium, and as is the case with Misbehaves classes Psychopsis, they really love their calcium. As calcium is an immobile nutrient, it is paramount that we are generous with that. If we are hesitant to up the fertilizer levels because the winter is putting doubt in our minds as to how much fertilizer is right, supplementing with calcium is super important to provide our orchids with that nutrient to use when you start seeing an eye swelling. Even 
an eye swelling during its early stages of doing so. Get that calcium in there, and if you have it in the form of a CalMac Combo product, then use that because the orchid will love the added magnesium as well. It will boost the photosynthesis capability while the new growth is developing without having to use any of that mobile nutrient from older structures. Moving nutrients around the structures is an energy consumer. The orchid is growing a new growth or growth, also massive energy consumer, possibly also growing roots at the same time. So a lot of energy is being consumed within the orchid to do what it wants to do. Eliminating one of those energy consumer sources, like the pulling of magnesium from older structures, will allow the orchid to focus on the energy consumption and production of the new growth. As a margin for my orchids, I may not be fertilizing heavily at the moment, but recently I noticed orchids growing spikes and some are growing new growth, images of which you have seen throughout this video. And before the really dark weeks of no sunlight kicked in, they got calcium nitrate into their reservoir. The reason I chose calcium nitrate in this situation only and not my CalMag product is because my temperatures are too low, my light levels are too low and while I ride out the dark cold days I am hoping that the calcium the immobile nutrient will be what they can take up without me upping the parts per million to get a higher concentration of calcium with the use of CalMag because I do not want to get any salt deposits around the roots during a time frame where I cannot flush as I normally would. My forecast stated 10 days of terrible light I am hoping that after those 10 days, I will have sun again. The orchids can go outside again. And the candidates that got their calcium boost will be ready for a flush, after which I will add CalMag. Still providing the calcium boost, but this time giving them magnesium so that they won't pull it from the back structures. You will see many of my orchids have a magnesium deficiency because I cannot do it all as regularly during the winter as I do in the spring and summer and fall. So I do take the risk of magnesium deficiency, but I'm working with new growths of the orchid. My principle being stay alive. New structures will produce new roots, but if light levels are not adequate, then the new growth, while it will grow, it will not bloom. So as we focus on our orchids to continue growing their new growths, if we cannot change the conditions the orchids are growing in, we can help with a nutrient that is immobile, which is calcium, and play with a nutrient that is mobile, which is magnesium. Most important thing to remember is the orchid needs the new growth to survive. If it can then bloom on that new growth, that is a bonus. If you have to sacrifice on any of the mentioned elements, do not sacrifice on calcium. We can always work with low humidity. We can always work with low light levels and low temperatures. Let me qualify the low temperatures though. We can work with those only to a degree because if an orchid is growing in temperatures that are too low or too high, persistently, then not even giving calcium, humidity or light will do the trick. The orchid cell structure will be compromised and that will be our teachable moment in which we learn which orchids will do well in our conditions even if the most extreme cases of not being able to provide for our orchids should take effect. In all of the examples of correcting conditions for orchids to push out another growth, we have to have an orchid that is strong enough to be able to push out a new growth. Weak orchids with no other point of growth or eye available may just be taken out by the failure of that one new growth it desperately needed, as may be the case of my Catlianthus Zagarig wax African Beauty. That is an unfortunate truth, but one I have to mention because none of what I have mentioned is a guarantee for new growths to start up elsewhere and the orchid may just fail because of the lack of energy and strength to try again. So how to avoid new growths from failing? Make sure that you are within the right temperature range for that orchid. Make sure it has enough light in order for it to be able to photosynthesize, produce sugars and bring energy into it being able to grow that new growth. 
make sure that if you have the adequate humidity for the orchid that you also have an adequate airflow so that none of the humidity can settle and rest on the new growth. Many new growths also produce their happy sap. That is a good thing because that is a nutrient provision that is a substance that is full of hormones and sugars that can also cause a new growth to fail if the temperatures are too low or the humidity is too high and there isn't enough airflow. Make sure also that you provide your orchid with the first and foremost supplement that it needs the immobile nutrient of calcium. If you have too low light levels, add the magnesium to that, make it CalMag. If you have light levels that are far too low for a consistent amount of time because of your circumstances and you don't want to risk any salt buildup in your pots because there is a very slow absorption rate of the nutrients while your orchids do not have enough light levels, then make sure that you provide the immobile nutrient. And yes, you may then encounter magnesium deficiency, but it is a deficiency that can be corrected while the new growth is still going to grow because of all the calcium it has. And then eventually, as conditions improve, then we can start working on correcting deficiencies by doing Epsom salt soak. But fundamental for a new growth is that it has the temperature, it has the light, it has calcium. If anything else, it's got to have calcium in order to perform, at least at the early stages, so that the cells grow strong and then we can work with the rest of it thankfully working in our favor is that orchids are slow growers so while conditions aren't right while it's growing a new growth very slowly we have time to work with the nutrients and then eventually the conditions will improve and then we can really pump in the fertilizer properly. What you do not want to do is give it a lot more fertilizer than you normally would during adverse conditions because with low light levels but high fertilizer, you may think you're doing your orchid a favor. However, the growth may start to bolt, meaning they will lean and grow a little bit too quickly towards the light because of the higher fertilizer levels that will result in very weak cell structure, which could then also cause a rot problem, even while that new growth may have already grown to five, six centimeters and is supposedly past danger phase. So if you have any questions, let me know for any specific conditions, environments, grow spaces, etc. I can talk you through any media, any setup, and any climate. This was in general to start the conversation about new growths failing. It's a great subject. Thank you, Misbehaves class. I appreciate that question because as we move into the growing season for some of us here in the Northern Hemisphere, I can't wait. Others are going to go into the winter season where they have to be a little bit more careful. What we are tiptoeing around now in the Northern Hemisphere, we don't want any new growths to fail. And besides that, once this video airs, hopefully then two or three weeks later, I can do an update on all the images that you saw, what I've got going on in my collection right now, the candidates that did get calcium nitrate prior to this really long extended dark cold weather that the grow space had to endure, and we can see how they fared. Calcium levels can vary because of my low light conditions. I only put in 100 parts per million. Once I have a sunny spell again, I will then put in 100 parts per million of CalMag. But the calcium will be lower as it is mixed with magnesium. But you see where I'm getting at. I am working with the conditions and making sure the orchid gets the nutrient it needs right now. And then hoping for the best, that the timing is correct, that when things improve, I can then target with all the nutrients and fertilizer to get the growths to grow either to size and bloom, but at least to size so that they can produce roots. If this video has been of any help to you, if it has prompted any kind of aha moments, if you feel like somebody else could benefit from this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a like, if you would share it along down the road. It will really help the channel with the algorithm, giving it exposure to a bigger audience. Thank you so, so much. And by the way, how about consider subscribing just to monitor the progress of these growths that you have seen throughout the video down the line. Fingers crossed that my calculations and my intuitions with what I was doing when I was doing it was correct.
we will definitely know a lot more in a month or two. <laughs> I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so very, very much. And once again, Misbehaves Class, thank you for your question. I hope I could expand a little bit more on the topic than what I could provide to you in the comments. Have yourself a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.